do you think and do you think why is Johnny Ray at the moment a bit struggling? In my opinion, he's just under a lot more pressure. You know, the worst person for him to put him under pressure is Top Rat because two years ago he was helping him. I'm not scared of a change. Yeah. There's a lot of riders that they find something that's good and they will, they will never leave. Scott went for the money. Yeah. Scott's gonna lose the career. Okay, I didn't go for the money, you know. I'm a racer, I still want to win a world championship. I say to the people, okay, I'm third in the championship, but fucking what a <laughs> championship, you know what I mean? Like, some races ago, everyone said, ah, oh, Scott is done. Vollgas ins neue Video, präsentiert von Renngrip, eure Nummer 1 Anlaufstelle für Rennsport, Ersatzteile und vieles mehr. So Scott, hey, um, uh, first of all, thanks for, for making this happen, I really appreciate this. That's not, not normal to, to just write you on WhatsApp and ask, hey, come on for an interview. So thank you very much. Um, I collect a lot of questions from the community outside um, to ask you which they are interested in. And the, the hardest one maybe and, and the, the most important question what I get is um, why you change to BMW and why you will leave Ducati? Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, it comes uh, from many things, um, but in the end, uh, to make it simple, BMW wanted me already two years ago, but I said the bike is not ready to perform at the level that I believe I can make. Um, and when I came from British Superbikes, I needed to have a bike that can win races so I can show myself, prove myself again to everybody. Um, and now I did that and I see that BMW made not one step, but two or three good steps with the bike and the package. Um, and then this year they have Vandermark in the team, which I think is good for the development. You know, he's come from Yamaha. He is expecting good handling. He will push the bike to work in this way, which I think is positive. Um, and from Ducati side, everything was just kind of quiet. You know, there's a few things that they needed to do, which is okay, but I cannot risk. I cannot wait, cannot wait, cannot wait until I'm in the moment that I have no other option. So I was in a position where BMW really want to give me everything with the package to make the bike the best. Mm -hmm. And Ducati was kind of like, not really sure, should I say, was my feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and I just couldn't take the risk. And I, I'm not saying that um, Ducati BMW is better or worse. They are different in my opinion. Completely. Um, I got a lot of, you know, on social media, you get the keyboard warriors. Yeah. Scott went for the money. Yeah. Scott's gonna lose the career. Okay, I didn't go for the money, you know. I'm a racer, I still want to win a world championship. That's why I'm here, that's why I work every day. Um, and on the other hand, I'm thinking like, if these guys are watching the same race that I'm watching, then they wouldn't be asking or saying these things because for the last four races, five races, if you took me out of the race, BMW was in front of the next Ducati. Of so, course, yeah. In the end, the performance of the bike is showing that it's pretty good. So is the difference me or is the difference the bike? Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that we'll tell with time. And I look forward to the, the new project. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a cool bike. I like their enthusiasm. The team is quite fresh. So, mm -hmm. you know, to win, they still need to get that win. They're still hungry for it, you know, and that's something that I like in a team. Okay. So you just see more you're more interested in the challenge that in something different what people say yeah in a way a challenge like i'm not scared of a change yeah. there's a lot of riders that they find something that's good and they will they will never leave you know um why not change i'm not scared of a change it makes things different 
the thing is, is I'm looking for the next step to reach a championship, um, which has been over the past few years that Ducat has been a very good package, but sometimes a little bit inconsistent, which makes it difficult to win a title. Um, and I just feel that they're in a position where they're focused a lot on MotoGP, which I fully understand, mm. you know, this, this is their main thing. Um, but I'm here and I want to win. So I need to look which project is able to make the next steps. Mm. And I just believe that BMW can help me with that. Okay. No, great. Uh, maybe a lot of people outside now understanding and uh, can see your, uh, your truth about mm. that what you're saying. That's, that's good. So what brings me a bit to a next question about in World Superbike, um, do you think and do you think why is Johnny Ray at the moment a bit struggling? You can see it when you watch the races, that's something different compared to the last years, that's something completely different, other Johnny Ray, I would say. Yeah, could be a couple of things, but in my opinion, he's just under a lot more pressure. You know, the worst person for him to put him under pressure is Top Rat because two years ago he was helping him, mm -hmm. you know, he was teaching him. Mm -hmm. And now the problem is Top Rack almost knows the things that Johnny knows. So mm -hmm. he's going up against himself. Um, Top Rack is a hard rider and Yamaha has made a step this year. The of bike course. is consistent, rain, dry, long track, short track, and this is dangerous. This is what every rider is looking for. I believe last year when I was fighting with Jonathan, there was a few more things in his favor. Experience with the tires, experience with the circuits. He knows that the Ducati will not be consistent at every track. He knows, even when Alvaro was a million points ahead, he knew was not going to be till the end of the season like that. So you can stay calm. But when you're in a situation where there's a guy that on your good day, this guy is beating you, then you start to question the situation yes. and you see that he's overriding, he's riding too hard. He can still win races, but they're not coming easy. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times he would get away two second lead and that was the race done. Yeah. There was many times last year that I could stop that, but there was also many times that I couldn't. This year, if I'm not, top rack yeah. is. And this is the problem is he doesn't get a break, cannot find his rhythm. Um, but he's a guy with so much talent that he understands the situation. He's doing the best he can. And he, unfortunately, at the moment, he has to ride over the limit and it costs him a crash. It's 25 points. Yeah. Um, And that's the, the hard thing. I just think that the competition has got a little bit closer and it's not allowing him the breathing space. Yeah, yeah. For, for the spectators, it's great. Mm, of course. <laughs> for me, it's great. For the championship, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, like, yeah. I say to the people, okay, I'm third in the championship, but fucking what a <laughs> championship. You know what I mean? Like some races ago, everyone said, ah, oh, Scott is done. I had three great races. I closed the gap again. I thought, yeah. okay, we're there. I go to the next track, I have a crash, I drop back again. But it's like, it can happen. It's never over until the last race of the season. And this is what, what I say to people. And it's the same top rack in Assen said the championship's over when his own teammate crashed him. It's over. And now we go again ahead. Yeah. And then he had another breakdown. But then Jonathan had a DNF. Yeah. Like, it yeah. is quite entertaining to watch because of course. I can't tell you who's going to win. Yeah, <laughs> nobody know knows I mean? it. <laughs> like, there is a, there is a pe percent of me that thinks I can still win the championship. Of course. And it is possible. Yeah, it is. So with them two, the uh, neck and neck fighting like this, you know, can anything happen? Uh, it's great for, for spectators and for us it's great to watch it that's more interesting than any other race you can watch in tv um i always make an alarm on my phone <laughs> when, when when scott is racing and that's that's really 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 nice to see even in magni where you have a little bit harder but the fight between toprak and johnny was unbelievable great mm. uh, it, it was It was racing like this hell, you the, know. This is the, the fighting, you know. Yeah. Barcelona last week was the same, yeah. fighting, fighting. Sometimes it gets a little bit much. Like Barcelona was red flag, red yeah. flag, because everybody sometimes gets a bit crazy with it. But this is the thing that I enjoy about World Superbike is you have three races in a weekend. You can win some, you can lose some. The wet race, I thought, okay, I can go on the podium. I went off the start line four meters 
and I went backwards and I said, okay, no feeling, cannot do it. And then at the end of the race, I was coming faster, 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 and I win the race. Like yeah. it's crazy for yeah. a rider to have that feeling. Completely. Yeah, nice. What brings me to our next question when we're talking from um, competition. Um, how is, is it possible or how is it possible to, uh, to stay friends or is it possible to, to be friends with the other competitors like Johnny or Toprak or even Rinaldi or uh, somebody else? Is this, is this possible? It's always possible. Um, it just depends on the person and the way they're acting, you know, is, uh, I'm quite easy with everyone as long as they respect me like I respect them. Um, like I was a little bit pissed off with Top Rack in Czech Most, Republic mm. because it was a bit naughty, you know, it was a bit much like three corners before, came so fast, just missed me. So, fuck. Next corners, like does it again and I'm like, dude, if I didn't move, we're both on the floor and this is not, for me, the safest track in the world. Like. Mm. We all had this discussion, like I just didn't find their respect as a human. But then I slept on it, you know, and I thought, okay, just let it, you know, let it go. There comes a point when lines get crossed and you never go back. Yeah. But I'm always in to kind of give people a second chance or a third chance. It just, as long as one line is not crossed, I'm yeah. okay. Like in the end, when I'm on the track, I want to be everybody and I'll do almost anything I can do to do it. Yeah. When I'm off the track, there's nothing really to have a problem about. Yeah. And I try to keep it that way, you know. It's not like friends, it's difficult to have. I would never really be able to sit down and have dinner and feel like relaxed because okay. at the end, like yeah. it's my enemy. That's yeah, who yeah, I want to yeah, yeah. fight, who I want to win against. So it's difficult, but I just try to keep it neutral because mm -hmm. It's not worth having enemies. Yeah, yeah, life is too short to hate people and have people hate you. It's not worth it. That's true. It. Nice, nice. Okay, it's, uh, now I need to take a look for the next question. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, yes, um, a lot of people ask me, and I asking me this by myself when when you can see you on on TV racing, and every, everyone is asking where took uh, Scott this energy what you put into the bike how you moving how you your mindset and everything you looks like a very strong person person mm. um, uh, a, a bit of aggressive in some points and and there's a question where you take this energy for mm. for this passion I never thought about that really especially on the bike um, a lot of it could just be the The childhood, the way you grow up, the people you were surrounded in, the place that you come from, this all was like uh, mixing into making one person a rider. You know, I'm I'm not really politically correct in the way I speak, but that's just where I've came from, who I am. I'll never change. On the track is like I say, I want to fight to win. Like I want every millimeter everything i do is like 100 to make it sometimes i do too much you know mm. and i need to bring myself back but my energy is coming because it's not that i enjoy it i don't i'm not having fun that's not fun i've passed fun like fucking long time ago it's more like to be successful mm. to want to win mm. so you get to the point of like okay if i do this there's a chance i'm gonna crash we do it. It's not like when you have fun, okay, that's nice, it feels good. Yeah. doesn't feel nice when you're riding almost over the limit. Yeah. Having that feeling, that anticipation of I'm about to crash or this or, and you're just trying to manage every small little detail on the moment. You know, you lose the front, you want to push in, take the gas and the rear slide, like it's so many things. Yeah. But in the end, I'm happy to ride like that to, to win or get a good result. When you ride like that and you finish 17, 18, like when I was in MotoGP, this is not fun mm. anymore. I don't like the risk for reward is uh, well out of balance. And it's just the uh, character of the person, you know, like top rack rides hard. To be, to be honest, a lot of the guys in Superbike are, are quite hard riders, quite aggressive, quite forceful with the bike. And maybe that's why it kind of, it suits me here with my style. And I've always been like that and especially in the Moto2 days I was 
too much aggressive mm. i had to work many years to like bring myself down because i was making the bike under stress but i just want to take everything all the time break the latest earliest on the gas and sometimes you need to take a step back to go forward um so now i just try to tame it i have the feeling but i have to tame it yeah i can see this when i, when I watch you racing that's true yeah, of course compared to last year for example it's a different mm. one um, yeah, great. Um, what brings me to the next question? Dieses Video wird dir präsentiert von Nolan x -Lite. Qualitativ hochwertige Motorradhelme für die Straße und die Rennstrecke. Okay, um, a lot of hobby rider outside enjoyed a lot what we did already a couple of months ago mm -hmm. in the video where you have where you gave us the advice the riding advice mm -hmm. for hobby drivers and and now what brings me to the next question is um, what do you think why hobby rider on the track um, crashing or what what they are doing wrong for a crash even when they are not fast as a professional Mm. because they don't really know what they're doing you know like not in a horrible way but mm. for me when something happens I automatically do something to correct it yeah like and I learned this when I was five six seven eight nine years old you know I crashed many times if you don't do that when you're younger mm. unfortunately it's going to happen the only way to improve is to fail so, you know, in track day, that's crashing. You yeah. know, when you go in a corner and you lose the front, you say, fuck, what happened? I don't know. Again, lose the front, what happened? Oh, maybe I was too fast. Lose the front, okay? I was definitely too fast. So you learn from those things, which as a kid, I learned that without knowing. Mm -hmm. So it's here, mm -hmm. I would know it. But I didn't learn myself. Whereas when you're older and you're on track day, you also study things like you want somebody to say to you like me to teach you okay come to the corner break you are gonna feel this this could happen if this happens do this then you need to go in but if this happens you need to do this and then you need to apply this like it's a never-ending list of things that happens in one corner that i cannot tell a person this a person has to learn this yeah. if i went to do another sport The only way I get better is by failing. And yeah. then I say to some people, well, but how do you do that? Yeah, I did it all my life. You know, in the end, you need something like 10,000 hours to be a professional at something. Yeah. It's difficult to get that being a track day rider. Um, and then it can come down to track day riders trying to save money on tires. You know, I, I, it's so expensive yeah. tires. So yeah. I understand. But the more you go over the limit of the tire, the more chance you're going to have to crash. Yeah. I would prefer to have a cheap bike, but have new tires at the correct time because mm -hmm. I know that the grip will be good. Um, then set up, there's techniques, there's so many things as to why, you know. Um, but the only thing I can advice I can give is don't try to rush the mm -hmm. things, you know, don't try like, okay, I want to go fast and just attack. Like, I see a lot of track day riders doing that and they just hit a wall and they can't go yeah, fast yeah, they can't yeah, go yeah. fast they even get slower <laughs> yeah but yeah. then for example when i was um teaching some guys this winter and we take one or two seconds off the lap time and then they say but i don't understand i said why they said well i feel even more in control and i'm two seconds faster yeah i said yeah because you slow down you understood the process and then you do it you're yeah. not just thinking of each corner this one this one and that's kind of the difference and then you make mistakes because maybe there's a corner that i would tell you to go slower to then go faster but if you're alone you think i need to go fast here mm -hmm. but then you arrive there and you're too fast and you yeah, crash yeah, yeah. so it's many things but um time is something you need mm. Uh, maybe as spe something special when you enter the corner may some people are too fast on the apex or entering too fast or breaking too late and then I 
this is my feeling um, that I then, then then they have to struggle to turn the bike and to accelerate what is more important to accelerate what I guess maybe it's true I don't no, know it's correct because yeah. when you think about it the more if two people are riding like this and one closes the gas here and one closes the gas here the difference is not going to be as big as if he opens the gas here and he opens the gas because here he gets more meters and he's longer going faster yeah, yeah. here you're going slower yeah so you're better to anticipate and be sure to get a good line where you see well the apex see the exit and work on drive like it's something i've taught myself also for many many years mm. until today i still arrive to the corner like oh, it was a little bit tv mm. you don't see it but i i feel yeah. like i cannot make it correct And it's something we always work on all the time is to get the balance of entry speed to gas. But for us, the margin is like this. Yeah. For a track day rider, That's you have good. meters to play with, yeah. but you can make a big difference. So yeah. what you're saying is correct. Okay, cool. Yeah, what brings me to the uh, last technical one question. Um, what's, what do you guess is the most important um, training for track riding of the bike? without spending money what do you class as spending money what is the budget five thousand ten thousand two hundred no um when you when you say something okay you have you have five track days or five track weekends the year as a hobby rider and what you can do in the in in com between this this track weekends for example to get better in the next one what you can do without spending money for the track Not not uh, buying tires, not buying bike suspension or something like that. Just do something what you can do every day without spending money. It's a hard one, I know. Well, there's nothing you can do every day that can help. Um, for a track day rider, I always um, would recommend doing something like super motard or like kind of mi not mini bikes, but like say a valet or something mm, like bike, this yes. because... The bike is smaller, everything is slower, you have time more to think, you can crash the thing 10 times and you can still go. I mm. did a lot of um, a lot of riding with the small super motard, like the real pit bike with super moto uh, tires. Mm. And I had this thing with third gear, so I had to work with corner speed. And it was amazing. I, I enjoyed it because I could push, I crash, I get back up, no issue with the yeah. bike. You cannot afford to do that on the on the track there because it yeah. always costs a lot of money so if you're in spain because like over for example in the uk it's difficult to go super motor or something but trying to be active with a bike is um, something where you learn and you pick up these things so what you learn on the car in track with a pit bike or super moto you can then implement it on the track mm -hmm. so when you brake and you slide on a track bike you panic you mm -hmm. go straight into the gravel and you put the bike down Okay, maybe 500,000 euro if you make the bike roll in. Super moto, you have this, whoop, okay, whoop, okay. After three days, okay, I understand. Uh, Go on the track bike, whoop, whoop, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like you can practice those things and put them onto the race uh, bike. Is it real? You know, like mm. for track day riders, hobby riders, like training, fitness, these things, it has a part, but track, if you get tired, you come in you know yeah. like riding is the best thing that can make you rider fit yeah a lot of the pro riders like myself i cycle a lot i do a lot of training psychologically to help me and to keep my weight down yeah you know otherwise i would be doing something different that can maybe help me i was doing boxing a lot of boxing when i was in bsb because i wanted to be strong i wanted to be aggressive i had to like manhandle the bike weight was not an issue but i needed power yeah. like so i went up four or five kilo and i can't afford that four or five kilo in superbike but in superbike i understand like i don't need to have as much strength and power i can be able to be less kilos and you have to just work your program to what you want to get out mm. okay great everyone outside knows now what to do buy a pit bike and and train with old tires on the pit bike <laughs> exactly or get a get a rider coach you yeah know, or get, you, spend a day you yeah know. yeah um some of you can book you for, yeah i need to see first what the testing plan is because obviously my priority is racing yeah, well course. um but like 
this year and last year when I did some um, training days, it was good. You mm. know, like I enjoy to help other people because what they spend with me in one day, and it was a comment that a handful of the guys said, what I spend with you today, I learn more than what I would spend on doing 10 track days. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> And that's kind of the thing that I would like to teach people. They take with them. So they go to the rest of the day or the next track day and mm. have those things here yeah. in the muscle memory and go, oh, fuck, Scott told me to do this. That's correct. Why am I doing that? Oh, yeah, Scott said if this happens, do this. And my friend at home said to me, like, your, sometimes your time um, is more valuable than the situation, which was saying basically, if you go to do something, you're better off paying somebody for their knowledge that they took over 10 years yeah. and they can give you 10% in one hour yeah. than you try to get that knowledge in 10 years that you don't have. Yeah, of course. And I thought, this is smart. That's true. Yeah, really nice, Scott. What brings me to the private question. Yes. Also most important, most interesting for people. Um, congratulations for- Thank um, you for being married in engaged, the future engaged yes, and married <laughs> um you 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 won the, the race in in czech republic in most and you ask uh, jc um for the most important question what uh, a man can ask a woman so the question is would you have asked jc to marry you if you haven't won a race till now and what date is the wedding well um I would have asked her by now, but my plan was um, Donington Park, okay. you know, home race, yeah. you know, some fans, some family, I had the picture in my head, you know, I had a great record at Donington Park for, for winning, so I thought, this is the one, didn't happen, <laughs> race one, two or three, didn't happen, okay. What do I do now? Okay, we try in Assen, I think was the next race. Second, second, second. <laughs> Didn't happen in Assen. <laughs> and after Assen, we went to. It was mo it was Czech Republic. Was it Czech Republic? Yeah. And the first and that I the first race leading three seconds and top rack two corners to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, F maybe it's not meant to be. Yeah. You know, maybe like in the world, it's not meant to happen in this moment. So, okay. Could be, but yeah, you you never know. And I said, okay. The Super Pole race, I was closing, closing, closing. I needed one more lap. Okay, didn't happen. And I said to myself, okay, I had the helmet for Brad Jones, my friend. I mm -hmm. had the special helmet. Yeah. So, okay, I need to win a race for him with this helmet on. Yeah. I need to. And if I don't win the race now, I will ask JC next week. I'm, I'm done with it, basically. So I went off to the race. I got a good start. And I just, uh, I just remember, like, top rack was closing a bit and I said okay let's go I said let's f go so then I was just bang 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 the whole race and I got it but if I didn't win that race I would not have asked her to marry me in Czech Republic yeah. um, but I'm happy that yeah. it happened as it did it was a fantastic day for me for her the situation with uh, with my friend you know like he was quite injured on two days after they released that he is coming better he will mm. be okay so it was a nice time of my life to yeah. be honest what makes you more nervous the asking jc or the win the race <laughs> they were asking jc i didn't know <laughs> you know because there was no rehearsal you can't rehearse that stuff like on the podium and you know organize the things with donna for her not to see the ring and i travel with the ring i need to give it to the team manager mm -hmm. and she's on everything okay i keep my rucksack on five minutes longer, why you, why you should have your rucksack on? Because <laughs> I'm trying to like, you know, go and give it to the team manager. So when it all happened and I didn't see the ring, I had said to Serafina, I look, you need to make the ring. And it was all happening. And then the woman at the podium had the ring. And then JC didn't want to go up because she was embarrassed for give the trophy. And then they persuaded her, but everything was in check language yeah. also so yeah. I was on the podium and I was thinking fuck when does she come like yeah. I didn't understand anything and then it was like the microphone this it was like everyone was coming out fast okay I need to go down and then I get on one knee and when she came and I, I wanted to ask her I was I couldn't speak I couldn't 
speak. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell is wrong with you? Because I wanted to just say, will you marry me? But I was like frozen. I, I didn't know why. Yeah. It was like so much adrenaline from winning the race. Mm -hmm. And then it was a moment you realized that this is happening. Yeah. And then you realize you have hundreds of thousands of people around the world watching this moment. Yeah. And it was like, she was frozen and I was frozen, but I was just trying to make the situation. She just stood there. I was like, come here. I need to put the <laughs> ring on your finger. I tried to put the ring on. I was like, shaking, shaking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it was good. Right? It was uh, it was a great, no, great it was time. Great, yes. yeah, it was great to see. My my wife said, <laughs> do, you know, "Do you want to know what my wife said?" Well, tell me. Oh man, <laughs> because we we are married, but I didn't ask like a typical one. It was just a decision because our daughter was born before, oh. and then she saw this, and then she said to me, "Look at this." Scott have eggs and you? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can I help you with that? <laughs> no, I know. But I, I said to her, okay, uh, um, I can hear this all, all, all year long the next <laughs> year. <laughs> so, so I'm sorry for that. So one last private question. A lot of cyclists are asking this. Um, what is your FTP in cycling? Um, FTP is something like... Uh, Average? Your FTP is like um, you make a test on 20 minutes and then they calculate for an hour mm. and then you work with your power zones like zone one, two, three mm. or whatever. So like when you do a 16 kilometer time trial, it's about 20 minutes. This is good to make um, a test really. Mm -hmm. um, and my, my best FTP this year was 384 for 20 minutes. But then it changes, you know, like when I come racing, it's difficult for me to maintain my level. When I go in the winter, I can build, build, build. And it, I try to maintain in the season, but it's quite difficult with traveling mm. and, and mm. racing. But it's okay. I enjoy the cycling and started racing this year, which is amazing. I found a lot of love and passion for this. And next year I will start my own team with Great. cycling. Yeah, cool. I want to have six riders. Um, and it will be good. I, okay. think. I would like to have joined the team, but there's so much conflict with sponsors, tires, yeah. helmets, bicycles. So mm -hmm. it's okay. Let's make my own team. And that's what I'm working on now. Okay. Thank you, Scott. That's all. All question answered. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I wish you all the best for the, for the rest of the Thank season you. in World Superbike. And um, yeah, see you soon. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and thumbs up, please. <laughs> subscribe, <laughs> bye bye. subscribe, subscribe. <laughs>